Hi, everybody. My name is Anthony Quinn. Yes, and this is Quinn Spiracy. And let me tell you, I have a really awesome guest. And this is going to be a pretty semi serious episode. <laughs> everybody, Mark Sargent, how you doing, Mark? Hey, man. Nice to talk to you. And thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Dude, you like blew my mind the other day. You know, in these, in these times of disinformation and bullshit, you actually said, like, hey, call me, and I'll get a hold of you. I, know, I texted you, and you called me. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I do pick up the phone every once in a while, but yes, I do. It's not fake. The number on YouTube is actually a real number you can call. You will either get me or my voicemail. So. Oh, man. All right. So for those of you who don't know, Mark Sargent is the uh, – I don't know if you're the leader of the flat Earth movement. Is that is that um, no, you're a flat Earth enthusiast? No, is that a better I'm, way to put it? I'm not the king of flat Earth or the flat Earth baron or anything like that, um, <laughs> or, or president of flat Earth. No, no, I'm I consider myself the flat Earth recruiter, meaning if you okay. if you first get into the topic, you're probably going to run into my stuff. So yeah. Okay, I had a crown here. I had a crown here. I was going to send you, but okay, I'll return it. Yeah, well, yeah. Don't believe you know the doc. The documentary people were is like, oh, king of flat Earth. It's like, nah, I never ever claimed to be that. Not even, not even joking. No. Okay, so so this is this is a very um, interesting topic for me because you know I do this show because I knew a lot about it, uh, conspiracies years ago, twenty plus years ago, and what I found out is really a lot of them are just the same regurgitated stuff. Right. Um, and this is not, though. I remember years ago, about, I think it was about three or four years ago, I was searching, you know, I was looking at the flat earth stuff, and it was very interesting to me. Yeah. And I was watching something, um, a flat earth thing recently, and the guy said, try to search flat earth, it's all debunking. And I realized that, that it is all debunking now. So why are people so butthurt about it? You know, why do they get so upset about the flat earth thing? Because it is is something that is you are conditioned to since you were children. In fact, it's the only conspiracy that we debunk to children. We, we, we don't bring up, as you know, you know, in kindergarten, first grade, we don't talk about other conspiracies, dark and sinister things and black hats with guys twirling their handlebar mustaches. But we do tell them, it's like right out of the gate when you first get to school, by the way, we used to think the world was flat, but now it's a globe. See, here it is. And you spin it in front of them and then you put it in the corner of the classroom and that's, you never have to bring it up. You don't have to bring it up in second grade and third grade all the way until you graduate. And that's 12 years of that little globe sitting in your classroom. And it's amazing, uh, the conditioning Th- that and that's just the classroom side of things. Then you have all the space stories and space movies, you know, Stargate, Star Wars, well, Star Trek. That's yeah. and yeah, I mean, and oh, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. well, it was just to say that that's why you, you want to know why people have that near, knee jerk reaction. It is massive, massive conditioning. Very, very similar to the reaction of Neo in the Matrix, which is this is your world is not what you think it is. I mean, we're pretty much saying that line verbatim. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I noticed it with the moon hoax stuff. Okay, we talked about this briefly. Um, that I remember Joe Rogan going at Penn Jillette years, many years ago, and I remember that kind of sparked something for me. And for a long time, I thought that the moon hoax, you know, that that it was real. And since people's reaction is so bad to it, I started thinking maybe we did go, but something's wrong. Something's just not right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now. I'm watching all this stuff, and it, the Moon Hoax documentaries, the ones that I can find, keep getting better and better, and there's just more and more debunking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's we, – we start there. Uh, it, the, the, all the Moon Hoax stuff, which has been going around for years and years and years but really didn't take off until social media took off, um, that, was, that was a huge resource for us because we just kind of piggybacked off of what they were doing. We, you know, go, and then we, we took it a step further. Not only do we say, oh, yeah, by the way, everything on the moon is an absolute lie. We're saying everything in the space program is an absolute lie. And then we just start analyzing every piece of video. But, yeah, yeah, I could show you 
slides from Apollo 12 that just blow your mind because they look pretty from the outside. The the pictures that were taken and put in Life magazine and National Geographic and all that, they're iconic. But they might as well have been taken by, an, right? by I'm sorry, what? But they're tucked up. They're photoshopped. Oh, right? well, no. the, for, in the day, airbrushed. But it wasn't just that. They were staged. You know, they, they was obvious yeah, they absolutely. used studio lighting. And, I mean, the, the, the shots are perfectly framed. And they're beautiful. The still shots are absolutely beautiful. And then all of a sudden, you realize some things, the things you, like, pick up in movies later, which is like, wait a minute, who took these shots? It's like these are astronauts. These aren't photographers. We're we're the it, and these guys were taking it with with a camera with no viewfinder that was insulated against supposedly against radiation. How did they get these wonderful shots? And yeah, so it's, you didn't know that all 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 astronauts have to take a director of photography class. Exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm sure they all work for advertising firms in New York. Because they were, but but that goes to you know the and if with any conspiracy, any cover up, it's the weakest link in the chain, and that that is, advertising guys don't know anything about physics or engineering. It's like no, they'll do whatever it takes to make the shot look good, even if it doesn't make sense physically, which is what movies run into trouble all the time, and which is why there's there's wonderful websites out there called moviemistakes dot com, which you you look at a movie and it's like. Yeah, that could have never happened. You know, the even the, the the even the lighting is wrong. And yeah, they they did they were notorious for it with the Apollo missions. Oh man, I saw some really good stuff. I saw the one with the chain. Have you seen that one with the chain? I'm sure you've seen them all. The... There's like one some guy found from one of the Challenger things. You can see there's like a chain. Also, oh, this is what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Um, is there a percentage of the flat Earth stuff? Yeah. That um. People that are doing it that are are disinforming. Is there a percentage of people that you think are, you know, that are just spreading misinformation either? On yeah, 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 yeah. There, or, there is a know. little, there is a little bit of it, but it's not, it's not overwhelming. Most of the people that do public speaking and conferences and social media, they will. We're pretty much on the same page with stuff. But one of the there's two, there's two okay. thing, there's there's two things though that get put out there that the media gets wrong all the time. First off is that everyone in the flat Earth thinks that we are a giant pancake asteroid floating in space. You know, it's just this flat this yeah. flat disc floating in space, and and that's that's probably one of the biggest ones. Is like no 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 that's just something the media came up. It's an interesting image, which is why they run it as much times. It looks pretty much the same as Asgard in the Thor movies, which did us no yeah. favors whatsoever because people say, oh, oh <laughs> cosmic waterfalls and aren't you going to fall off the edge into space? It's like, no, there's no space. It's you, You're just basically in a building, in a snow globe that could be on somebody's desk, you know, could be on God's workstation for all we know. Um, the other, the only other piece of information is they, they say that not only is it a pancake asteroid, but it's traveling upwards at nine feet per second per second to um simulate gravity and it's like no no none of that but it, but it's it's really minor in the in the grand scheme of things we don't like the image that's shown out there a lot and the, well, i'm sorry one other thing is the media gets wrong is they tie us to the flat earth society the old school flat earth society um if flat earth oh, was and that's the religious dudes right no it's not even religious they're oh, just okay. they're just old in terms of meaning going back to the 18 1800s <laughs> meaning if flat earth was software oh, i got you yeah the original flat earth. okay yeah they you. would be yeah. 1.0 and i feel bad because one of the last guys to jump on board of the old society was um thomas dolby of all people he when they when they oh, i heard that yeah yeah he was like the number one member in well the high profile member when they redid it in the early 2000s and then we came along in in 2015 and just started ripping up social social media and no, like 18 months later somebody from the flower society contacted me officially so oh yeah i really like what you're doing and and really support what's like, like dude where have you guys been it's like we and and the, i was being as blunt as i could it's like look at this point we don't need you we we found a new way new way to do this so you can crawl back into whatever cave you came out of because you weren't doing anything by compared to our standards anyway you know, it, it just it shocks me though how and I said this before, but I'm going to reiterate it. Yeah. Just how you know people are so against it. Yeah. And I said to somebody because I was at a, I was at a show last night, a comedy show, yeah. and I was talking to people about it. I said, "Have you ever seen the Earth?" I said, "Do you know that there's never been a picture of the Earth?" And people don't know that. 
Yeah. You know, people don't know that you've never seen a picture of the Earth. It was one. It was. And yeah, it was one of the first points I ever brought up, which was, and I was stunned. I, people, a lot of people don't know this. When when I ran a, a tech support department in a, in a software company back in the day, around two thousand two thousand one, there was a. Um, I wanted to put all these iconic shots of Earth on all the different monitors. I remember doing all these searches online, and I could only find one shot. One, and it was, I just kept seeing the same one over and over, and I couldn't see the forest for the trees. I had no idea what I was looking at. Yeah. I was like yelling at the, the screen going, NASA, you suck. Why is there only one shot of the Earth from space? And it was Apollo 17, the famous blue marble shot. And then, I mean, even there's stories going to even um, Al Gore in the, the latest Inconvenient Truth movie where he called up NASA when he, you know, during the second term, it's like, yeah, I'd love to get a, a, an updated shot of the earth for my, uh, the, the wall behind my office. And they said, yeah, sorry, we don't have it. And so finally they updated it. They finally got a new shot, a blue marble shot that was taken supposedly in the summer of 2015 as we started rolling in through social media. And people don't understand how, how much, that's 43 years that no shots were ever taken of the earth for 43 years, not full disc shots. You can say, oh, no, we have shots here and there. I go, not the whole earth. And that's that's impossible. It can't be done. I mean, we realize that's, that's most of the 70s, all of the 80s, all of the 90s, 2000 through 2010, halfway to 2020, nothing happened in this era of space? Come on. Even the, you, yeah. Yeah, this is ridiculous. No, it's just funny to me how people, they just want to, they, if they like it, they want to believe it. You know, yeah. it's almost like they don't have time to really entertain anything. Yeah. And what I said to this person last night was, dude, don't you realize you see so much bullshit all the time with the Instagram stuff and all that crap you do? Yeah. I mean, I'm on Instagram, but I'm saying, so this guy, and honestly, Mark, let me just say this. Um, yeah. When I had the conversation with you, when I've seen you on TV, yeah. you seem to like be very comfortable um, a lot of the other conspiracy people, I, and I'm not, I don't mean to call you a conspiracy person. No, that's fine. No, you can call me a conspiracy person. That's fine. That, you're a conspiracy person, buddy. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> but, I am. But, but, you, but you hold your, you know, you hold your, your, your temper, not your temper, but you, you remain calm and you seem like you have integrity to me. You well, know, like when I talked to you on the phone the other day, you were, you were like, oh, I'll go on a debunking show. I'll go on any show. Yeah, and I saw somebody try to like trip you up one one time, and you were just like, "Well, it's what I believe," uh, it, you know. It, and I like that. I'm I, attracted to that. Well, thank you. Um, I mean, I've been told that I I can be a good salesman, but I but uh, there's a weakness to that. Meaning, I can sell something, but I have to believe in it. Meaning, you know, I, I couldn't, I could never go to a car lot and just like, oh yeah, that thing's got at least another hundred thousand miles in it. You know, no, I, I couldn't do that. But I have to have conviction in, in what I'm, what I'm, what I'm pitching. And in this case, I, you know, it took me nine months to finally get my head around it. And when I did, it's like, yeah, yeah, I absolutely believe it. I, 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 I've given the conditions to people. It's like, oh, what would it take for you not to believe it? I've given them the list of things. It's like. Yeah, hit hit me with what you got because I've been doing this now for six years straight, and nobody's even come close to touching me. So that's fine. So 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 okay. So tell me, what was the first clue? Was it it was the NASA stuff, probably right? The NASA, like the first thing that we were like, wait a minute, this is something's not right. The the NASA stuff had always been in my mind. Because I'd, yeah. I'd grow, I'm older, so I, I grew up listening to people talk about the moon missions. But before there was internet, before there was social media, the only place you could even go to talk about that was like UFO conventions. And that's never going to go yeah. well. I mean, that's that, that your credibility goes goes downhill once you walk in the door. Even though I love the whole UFO thing. And th th those were the first things. Yes, NASA going after the moon missions, was, the, the, the questions that make you scratch your head, things that don't make sense. Yeah. Um, the thing that re that's what everyone should look at first. In fact, I, I go forget yeah. about Flat Earth. I go, tell me the Americans went to the moon in 1969 and then quit in 1972 because they said people were getting bored with it and then never went back and no one ever else went and the space race between the united states and soviet union that didn't happen and all this other crap you know you know no there's six countries out there with launch capabilities no one has put a foot on the moon except for the americans come on 
don't I don't buy it. And um, they, they just said recently that they lost the technology. I mean, that's if that's not the nail in the coffin. Oh for yeah, somebody. I mean, people don't even know this. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Right now. Yeah, the, you're right. Their their attention span and what they like is is you know what they go for. A, a great example. You you mentioned that earlier. The Red Bull jump where, you know, Red Bull did this big promotion thing where they put a guy in a in a very, very high balloon, supposedly at 130,000 feet and had him jump out. Right. And the and the curvature they used a fisheye lens, otherwise known as a wide angle lens, otherwise known as a peephole lens. Yeah. And, it, and there was a severe curvature. And, and it's like, yeah, but he was only over Arizona. The curve of the earth, the earth it wouldn't be that bad. Neil, Neil Tyson, even on air, said, and it's like, oh, yeah, it was so scientifically dishonest. And I talked to producers, you know, and, and said, why did you run that shot with that really, really curved earth? He goes, well, it's a good shot. <laughs> it's it's better it's 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 better it's a better media piece it's why that's why we run it's a more dramatic shot i go but it's not it's completely a lie and they go yeah but no one's gonna know and it's true <laughs> they they didn't they didn't know people don't i not i'm not picking on on the audience the people that are listening here uh, but i'll i'll but you know 99 percent of the people walking the street don't even know what the curvature of the earth is and i i didn't know either i'm not being arrogant when i say that so when i say it's eight inches per mile right and people are going i'm totally with you i'm totally with you i go squared and then they just glaze over it's like oh my god i forgot everything about eighth grade algebra and it's like, no, it's eight inches per mile per mile, which means it gets steeper over time, which means that, you know, like 10 miles, it will only be 80 inches. But at, at 100 miles, it would be thousands of feet. So, it, and it's like, what's the point? My point is, is that, and this is why I bring it up, is the biggest proof, the thing that gets most people, because a picture is worth a thousand wor uh, words, is the boats going over the horizon. Which is the reason why the game changed was HD cameras. That's how it got how it got changed. So beforehand, the boat left. You saw it. You waved goodbye. They went off in the horizon, and Gilligan and the rest of them just faded away into nothingness. You know, they went over the curve of the Earth. Right? We all know this. Yeah. Well, now when you take an HD camera, you can crank up the zoom, and Gilligan and the Professor, they're all there. You're going what? And then you let them go away again. You crank up the zoom again, and they're there. And, and so you're like, okay, what's the point? My point is, eventually, these this boat, you know, with our castaways, has to be on the other side of the hill. But they're not. Uh, they you, they never make it to the other side of the hill. They eventually they just fade away because the atmosphere is a thickness. That's what gets most people. It didn't get me. In fact, I didn't even bring it up in the clues. I had people calling me in the first month saying, oh, yeah, we're running down to the beach with cameras. I'm going... Why are you doing that? And it's like, because water's, because water's flat and we can look across bodies of water. I go, hey, that's actually pretty clever. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that on my own. Anyway, sorry. I ramble. Yeah, I saw several of them. And one they said was a mirage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, that, where the guy says it's a mirage. I mean, that's kind of weird to me. Yeah, when you. When, that could have been a mirage? Yeah, yeah. When you're looking across one of the famous shots, and we've got video. We, we have way more. We have so much video on this. Where you look across Lake Michigan from one side to Chicago on the other. And yeah. it's 50 something miles, which means it should be a couple, almost a couple thousand feet of curvature. And the weatherman, yeah. I, you know, is like, oh, yeah, this is actually a mirage and it's not real. It's like, no, 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 it's atmospheric lensing, but it absolutely yeah. is not a mirage. A mirage, you would either have inverted or be wavy. I mean, we've got time yeah, lapse. That's what I was thinking. We, we've got time-lapse footage of the Chicago skyline where weather comes through it, you know, rain, and, and, you know, it gets dark, nothing wavers. You can actually see the cleaning crews cleaning floor by floor, and it's like, no, no, it's not a mirage. I go, the atmosphere has a thickness, which means, because one of your questions your audience may ask is, it's like, well, okay, why can't you see Japan from California and Europe from New York? Why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because it's the highest place. And it's like, well, because what you're breathing in, what we're talking in right now is only about 99% transparent, meaning, you know, you just, it's not nothing. You're breathing in 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen and some trace gases that gets thick over time. It's why you can't um, when if you ever know anyone that scuba dives, when you get down to like 200 feet. There's no sun anymore at 200 feet in the water, even though the water is Ooh. clear at 10 feet. And that's because it's got a thickness to it. That's why whales disappear into the distance. So, yeah. The, 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 so we challenge people. It's like find us an object at less than 
I don't know, 100, 150 miles that you can never, ever see across a body of water. It's never happened. That That's one of the challenges. Yeah, I've, that's seen, yeah, I've seen several guys do that with the camera, and it's amazing. Yeah. Like, they're like, okay, look, it's going, it's going over, and then they just focus in, and it's right there. Um, I just want to ask you one thing real quick. Yeah. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, yep. he's all over the place. Um, he annoys me a little bit, but does he know? Do you think he knows? No, no, Mom, I, the I don't think he knows because one of the things about compartmentalization, and that's a military term, is you want to keep people, especially your frontmen. They learned about this with the Apollo astronauts. You know, the Apollo astronauts turned into freaking, I think they told them exactly. It's like, all right, here's why you're faking it. Then they freaking lost it. Most of them crawled into a bottle. They didn't do interviews. These guys, I mean, oh, you, that one interview when they come back. Oh yeah, Great. yeah. The international press interview where I mean, these guys should have been like permanent smiles My on their. F- yeah, they they, they look been popping fucking champagne when yeah. they win the NBA championship. They oh, yeah. pop champagne. It, it should have been. <laughs> uh, they should have been high fiving so often they would have broken their fingers. It would have been that. <laughs> that great but no no it wasn't so anyway the the point was is that after that i think they i will say this the powers that be learn from their mistakes they're like yeah you know what it's a need to know thing just get the astronauts to to play their parts they don't have to tell kind of like telling a spy right you know a spy goes out there it's like okay this guy's gonna walk out of this hotel lobby you're gonna shoot him right you don't tell them why you're shooting them you're not giving them the intrigue or the backstory all the stuff we see in the movies it's like just shoot him It's above your pay grade to know anything else. Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's on stage. That's what he does. He is a cross between, and I'm not being mean or profiling here, but he's a cross between Sinbad and Bill Cosby. That's what he is. I mean, he could sell sell anything. It's just a freaking miracle that he eventually got his PhD and he went into astrophysics. Because the the man could he could he's got you you've seen him on stage he's got that charisma it's like he could do he could do TED talks he could do motivational speaking but no he's in the nerd community he is now the most popular scientist in the world but not no one's even close to this guy I mean if he dies there's going to be a huge gap it's not like when Carl Sagan passed away is this would be a huge gap they wouldn't even know who to freaking bring in there so. But does Neil know? No, Neil doesn't have to know because you want him acting as natural as possible. Why? I wouldn't tell him. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, just do your thing. You're good. (laughs) You're good. I mean, he may have some suspicions, but he's not going to he's not going to dwell on them. And in fact, if he was smart, he probably wouldn't go to the military and say, yeah. So what is the real deal? Because it would freak him the hell out. So, So all the astronauts are in on it then. The astronauts, the, the, the Apollo astronauts, well, okay, to clarify, do all the astronauts, are the astronauts faking it? Are they, are they lying through their teeth? Yes. Um, I had a, uh, an interviewer, well, they are. I had an interviewer ask me, with an astronaut, one of our guys, Terry Vert, sitting next to him. It's like, are you calling Terry a liar? I was like, oh, God. I go, because he was, he was picking on me because Terry and I were Americans and the journalist was British. And I'm going, no, no, no. I'm not saying that Terry's a liar. I'm saying he's a soldier. I go, I go, you got to remember that everybody that goes into space is a military officer and usually pretty high ranking. I mean, there's some guys like lieutenant colonels and higher that have to go up there. I mean, of course, that's who you'd want. You'd want to profile these guys as best you could. I go, look, he's a soldier. He follows orders. In fact, Terry was a full bird colonel. I'm like, you don't get to make colonel without knowing how to keep a secret. And he's under a different set of rules. When we lie, when we lie, yeah. we go to court. We may have to pay a fine, blah, blah, blah. If you lie in the military, it's called treason. <laughs> and it's a whole, <laughs> they, they lock you in a room and throw away the room. You don't come back from that. So no, so yes, so anyway, but 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 that's as far as it goes. Do are they lying about things? Are the astronauts, you know, going through the motions and and being actors? Yes. Are they told why they're being actors? No, no, you don't want them. Just just pay, just keep them enough. It's like okay, you're faking this. You're gonna do this. You're gonna spin around. You're gonna wave and talk to school children and and say, oh look, I'm in space. And then that's it. You go home and you can get to do whatever you want. But we're not going to give you the big picture. We've learned from that. I, I saw some old stuff that some um, somebody was debunking or not debunking. Somebody was showing 
And it was like, I think it was 80s stuff from Discovery, I think. Yeah. And the one guy's got sunglasses on, and they have these cheesy helmets that look like motorcycle helmets. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I'm so, I'm so glad you brought that up. Everyone in the 80s, because nobody in the 80s b- b- noticed anything. I was there. You know, we were just oblivious. It was like, there was apparently a space for her in the 80s. Nobody paid attention. So, because either they were just doing drugs or having fun or whatever it was. And, and, but yeah, I had a space shuttle toy, okay? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, well, (laughs) yeah, that. The, the 80s, the 80s footage was amazing because I remember looking at the Challenger, for example, uh, the, the helmets they were holding in the photo, you know, the, the big, the promo photo. I'm going, I was going, I've got all oh, those display helmets. They don't want to use the real astronaut helmets because they were freaking motorcycle helmets. And then I saw some of the, the rough VHS footage from those missions. I'm going, holy smokes, they're wearing these things and they're not even attached to anything. There wasn't, it wasn't a pressurized suit. They had short sleeve shirts, no gloves. Yeah, that's what they said. No, there was no pressurized. <laughs> yeah. And it, it wasn't pressurized. It was like weird, like the. The material didn't even look like a regular space suit. No, but but again, because nobody watched those broadcasts, and because there was no internet, you you couldn't rewind and watch it later. It's like yeah, yeah, you know, you couldn't even. Most people didn't even have um, v, v, um, VCRs at the time. No one noticed, and but yeah, I was stunned. I was like, really, you're going up with short sleeves shirts and a motorcycle helmet? And you're going to get away with it, and they did. It's <laughs> brilliant. So yeah, if you guys ever get a chance, watch it. It's on my channel. <laughs> Someone brought up a good point. Um, a lot of this stuff that's scrutinized by people, uh, the reason why they probably didn't get it because, you know, they were it was not it was linear editing back then. They were snipping stuff, snipping film, yeah. editing it together, and they were looking at a black and white image. Yeah, yeah, but the you know so. Yeah. The the, the the production value back in the day, uh, I mean, they did what they could, but they were scared to do some things. They, the, w- one example would be the blue marble shot. Why did they not make a shot for 43 years? They're like, well, because all it takes is one nerd in his underwear in Nebraska at 3 in the morning to find it, whatever it is, which is also why, uh, and, and I know people are going to say, oh, it's an exposure thing. It's like why there's never any stars shown in any of the moon shots at all. Not a yeah. single freaking blip. And you say, oh, it's an exposure setting. I'm going, no, it's not. Trust me. I put myself in the Black Hat's shoes. You don't show the stars because the, the stars have to be in the right place at the right time. So if the belt of Orion, if you're showing a shot, right, because they're all uh, time and date stamped. And if the belt of Orion yeah. is in the wrong spot, you get just one nerd. It's like, yeah, that shouldn't be there. And then all of a sudden, they're just going to start looking at the rest. It's like, yeah, all the star constellations, it's either the, the the stamps are all wrong or the stars are completely don't make any sense. And in the 60s, you know, the computer technology was really limited. So they said, somebody said, yeah, you know what? Just freaking get rid of them. We're not going to do stars. We're just going to – just no stars. No stars at all. And and they did. They got away with it. Same same thing, by the way, with the um, the suits. I, I love this. I whoever whoever came up with this decision should have gotten a medal and a, their own island and, and a harem, which was the um, the pressurized suits. The the you guys can look this up. This is not secret information. The early space suits uh, from the 1960s were heavy, heavy plastics and metal, and they looked like a bad B movie. You know, they were just they could barely yeah. even walk. And somebody said, yeah, we're never going to be able to do it. A production's going to be so slow. The spaceship's going to have to be monstrous to, just to hold these guys. And so then somebody came up with it. And somebody said, yeah, let's just use soft suits. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, why? Why? Because because the general public doesn't know anything about physics. It's like, and? It's like, well, soft suits would turn into a big balloon. They'd turn into parade floats and tip over and die. And it's like, yeah, but nobody knows that. We'll just put it on TV. It'll totally work. It'll totally work. And he did. <laughs> it's, it's just, so people are walking around in soft suits in a vacuum, and they don't get it because the average American, when they when they graduate, doesn't don't know. Like I'm not saying that I knew everything, but I knew a few things, which is they we are not taught much about engineering or physics or biology or chemistry or any of that stuff. But this was a big one, which was the soft suit does not work. In a vacuum, anything soft goes rigid and explodes. You can look this up. This is not hard to find. Look up anything soft in a vacuum chamber because we're dumb. We put everything in a vacuum chamber. Basketball, football, stretch Armstrong, a can of pop, whatever it is, they all explode. But the suits don't. 
and that was one of my challenges. Like, tell me why it doesn't happen. Tell somebody, tell me why. I go, give me. In fact, it was my challenge for three years. I said, loan me a freaking spacesuit, put me in a vacuum chamber. You've got them in universities. <laughs> tell me what happens. Tell me why I don't die. Uh, one of the first things that um, interested me about the moon hoax was the specs. When you see how much everything weighed and the technology, and then they're worried about the Van Allen belt now, but those things, it was like an inch of aluminum or something, those ships, right? I mean, oh, yeah. there wasn't much to them, right? Oh, I mean, my God. Yes, and by the way, that was one of my five. Okay, so uh, there's, this, there's a quick f- backstory to this. So there was a, a German television company that called me up and said, we've got a physicist, an astrophysicist that wants to debate you. I'm going, great, because it's almost impossible to find them. I go, he's from Georgetown, and he goes, what we're going to do, because physicists, you know, are really boring, and they don't give a lot of syllables. You know, it's, it's weird. When you get your PhD, the hot, more education you get, the less you seem to be able to talk. So they said, what we're going to do is we're going to record you asking questions. We're going to send him the video. He's going to respond in a video. That way you guys never have any direct action. Uh, Otherwise, you may be talking over him and and be unpleasant. I go, great. And one of my questions was, the Van Allen radiation belts, are they deadly? Yes or no? That was a simple, simple question. It's a trap question, by the way. Which is because there's only three things. They, we, NASA announced supposedly there's these horrible belts of radiation. They're 60,000 miles thick around the, the, around the world. And there's only three things that can stop radiation. Lead, gold, which is weird because it's actually twice as dense as lead, and then a whole bunch of water, which we use in power plants. And but you can't you can't use those in, in aerodynamics because they're basically anchors. You don't put an anchor on the top of anything. You, know, you know, they're really really heavy. So that amount of but aluminum, like what you were just saying, aluminum and plastic, which is basically all that that we use for aircraft and uh, and space stuff, doesn't stop radiation at all. So how did they get through yeah. the Van Allen belt six times round trips and nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer? In fact, I think there's still, as of a month ago, four of these guys still limping around today. Everyone's died of natural causes. How, how does that happen? And you and you say, well, okay, well, maybe they're not deadly. I go, okay, well, then you can go to the NASA.gov website. And there's this wonderful little video there. It's still there called uh, Orion Trial by Fire, which they said, oh, yeah, we're going to go to Mars. Orion is the Mars program, which is never going to happen. And they said, yeah, we can't test the capsules with people uh, because we haven't solved the radiation problem. And it's like, what are you talking about? You, you solved it perfectly. You solved it in the freaking 60s. In fact, the, you didn't, you, it was flawless. I, and, and they were really detailed about this. It's like, oh, yeah, Van Allen, really, really deadly. Shouldn't go through it. And it's like stunning, absolutely stunning. So th- this is what I find very strange, is that everybody always busts, like, your chops, other people, about, you're not a scientist, you're not a scientist. Yeah. But a lot of the people I hear that aren't scientists either use bad facts to defend the moon stuff. Like, I've heard people say that the Van Allen belt actually breaks up, that there's some parts of it that are weak, and that's how we got through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because it, it's weak in some spots and not others. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just a pretty good argument. What doesn't make sense about it, which is why I try to remind people, I go, fine, let's say, because remember, they actually went to Val- Van Allen was alive during the space program. Right? He was the, yeah. the, he, he, he came up with the belts in 59, and the space program was 10 years later. And they went back to him. They said, hey, how are you getting through it? <clears throat> and he goes, we're going to go real fast. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that, that's, that's a very scientific exclamation. You're going to floor it, basically. Pedal to the metal. That's, that's, you're going to get best speed, maybe 18,000 miles an hour. Look it up. Not a secret. And that's at least three hours, even if you, and, and that's going out, right? But you remember coming back, you have to hit the brakes a whole bunch because you have to slow down and then, you know, go into the Earth's atmosphere, supposedly. So you're even going to be spending longer in the belts on your, on your trip back. And it's even going to be a smaller, smaller capsule. So how, how, how the hell? In fact, not only that, when the capsules got back, they should have been freaking glowing, even if even if they were protected on the outside, and these things went straight to the, to the Smithsonian. They should be still radioactive today. Somebody should go there with a Geiger counter. Tell me if the capsules are radioactive. I highly doubt it. So yeah, it's the I. And, and I, but, I think it was in, in, go ahead. Go ahead. No, in one of your movies, right? I think it was yours. I've watched a bunch of stuff. Yeah. They show all the presidents, and there's and they show the head of NASA. 
Um, and they're like, we will leave low Earth orbit. We will leave yeah. low Earth <laughs> yeah. orbit. Yeah. We will. All of them are saying it. Right? Oh, hell. And then they're saying, we will go to Mars. We will go to Mars. Right. We will go to Mars. No, no. And they're saying and, the same stuff. And, oh, I, I got one for you. So I was that along those lines where there's a mo- there's some wonderful montages. I should put one at the beginning of my show on a regular basis just to remind people that every president since Reagan has said, we're going back to the moon. Right, they or we're committed to going back. Right, you know, sure, that, the, have them all on tape, all right, on tape. Yeah, yeah, Reagan and Bush and Clinton and Bush again right. and and the Obama. They all said, "Oh yeah, we're going back to the moon," and the science people they just got lulled into submission and they didn't realize how much time has passed. Right, it's been 1972 was supposedly the last time anyone went to the moon. And I remember this one girl, she was in um, Ireland, and I asked her, she was a heavy, heavy science girl. I asked her point blank. I said, so, <clears throat> you know, she was talking about the moon missions. I go, yeah, it's been a long, long time. I go, when you going, right? And she looks at me with the most <laughs> sincere eyes, and she goes, we're soon. We're, we're going soon. And I go, oh, you poor, poor thing. Because yeah, yeah, that's that's what they keep telling them. They dangle that carrot in front of you them. Want a hug? Did you give her a hug? I uh, I wanted to, but her blood pressure was up. She wanted to punch me before it was over. <laughs> uh, kind of like oh, the Orion no. thing. You know, they keep talking about Orion, but they can't even fool the people into that one because even even Hollywood movies have a tough time explaining uh, Mars. It's like at the very least, even if you believed it, it's a one way trip. Even if you believed it. You're not going back. You know, you're not coming back from that. There is no, there is no fuel. And, and uh, by the way, space, the, the space movies and space and, and television shows have done a lot in the way of uh, filling the gap. <clears throat> the, one that started, the one that started it all was um, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was in 1968. Very deliberate. You, can, you soften the, the public up in 68 that, oh, yeah, we could have a moon colony by 2001. Oh hell, the um oh, one of my favorite sci-fi shows ever, uh Space 1999 with Martin Landau, right? Which assumed that in 19 oh, it was it was yeah. done it was yeah. done in the 70s, but it assumed that in 1999 there would be a moon base with at least a couple hundred people on it. And people were like, yeah, t- totally feasible. Where what happened? Well, yeah. They've been saying the Martians since the 50s. Yeah. So let me, or even probably before, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, I saw something on the Chinese rover. Okay? Oh. And they made a, a decent point, right? Because they yeah. said it has um, uh, sensors on it, uh, sun uh, panels on it. Solar right? panels, yeah. So if it's on the dark side of the moon, they said, how is the sun hitting it? Right. Oh, yeah, okay. For the people that don't know, supposedly China has had a rover on the moon for four and a half years at least now. And And when it first happened, it wasn't even that big of a deal. Not that many people even knew about it. No, no. Well, there's a thing. Okay, so American media, Western culture media has a really, really tough time with this. Because if you admit it, then all of a sudden it turns into a new space race and the public is like, okay, what are you doing about this? China's getting the lead. What are you doing to combat this? And they don't want to accelerate any more programs out there. But there's other questions to be asked, like, okay, we won't even go to Mars right the second. Why, why did the Chinese moon, um, rover, moon rover land as far away from the American site as possible? Right? You'd think, I mean, like, talk about a coup. You, you land the rover, you, you roll them right into the next to the American flag, and you know, and all the debris that's supposedly left from the moon missions, you knock, yeah, a, knock a few things yeah. over, take a selfie, and be like, yeah, we're the new kid in town. Totally work. It, but they did not do that. Same thing with Mars. I, I heard that a couple days ago. Even American media, the, the, the headlines were, state says China has rover on moon, which was their way of saying, we can't confirm it, and we don't want to confirm it <laughs> because it looks bad whether it's real or it's not, right? Because if it's if it's not, well, then did the Americans go either? And if it is, well, okay, China did it, and they didn't seem seem to be breaking a sweat doing it. So yeah, it's just oh, so yeah, much theater. I've gotten some people pretty pissed. I've gotten some people pretty pissed off because um, I've said before. This is what I always used to say. I used to say, "Show me one picture of the moon buggy, and I'll shut up forever." I just want to see a picture of it. We have all this technology yeah. where we can get all the pictures of the moon. So show me a picture of the moon buggy. Yeah. 
You know, oh yeah. Like oh, you mean the, the, the where where they t- they they unloaded it off the be- the side of the thing and unfolded it like a pair of folding scissors and put this thing together? Oh, oh, oh that's oh, because I thought they left it there. Oh, they know? did. They, well, they did leave them there. They absolutely did that supposedly. Yeah, yeah but the, no, the moon the moon the buggies. Pad. Go ahead. Oh no, the moon buggies are absolutely ridiculous. By the way, it's like oh, first off, supposedly what? Why would you even need it? <laughs> it's like it's like okay because. Everyone downplays the most obvious thing, and that is when you get there, the very first mission, you'd be lucky if you could get those guys outside of the craft, right? It's like the, the, all you would care about when you got there is not dying. That's it. That's all you would care about. You'd look up at the earth. You'd freak out. You're like, oh, man, we better make it back. You would be constantly stressed out of your mind. You wouldn't be able to sleep. You'd be checking your gauges. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Let me go on another direction here. Find me, of, out of all the audio from all the astronauts, find me a single audio clip of an astronaut checking his gauges, meaning his oxygen. It's like, well, you know, because they're walking around. It's like, hey, f- hey, what, uh, Neil, we only got 20 minutes of air left. Got to go back to the ship. Hey, we only got eight minutes of air left. No one said anything about this. Apparently, they had unlimited ox- oxygen at all times. Not only that, they were reckless with their suits. They fell. There's a wonderful collages of them falling all the time. I'm going, there's sharp rocks everywhere, that, yeah. right? You, yeah. You, you, that would be the second thing you'd be worried about, which is like falling on anything sharp <laughs> ever. You, you'd never want to <laughs> do that because you punch a hole, it's over. These guys are playing golf. <laughs> They're talking like airline pilots. You know, the airline pilots are in the middle of turbulence. You, you think you're dying. They're like, yeah. oh, we're running into some bumpy weather now. And so, you know, you, you, the oxygen thing's falling down. That's what these guys are talking like. It doesn't make the moon bring, sorry, circle back. The moon buggies didn't make any freaking damn sense. Plus, if you watch the great footage that we, you know, because with technology, we've zoomed in and stabilized and then doubled the speed. All, of the, all they did was they took a regular moon buggy, which was gas powered, ran it at half speed camera. And, you know, and then that's it. It made it look like it was floating, which is another thing. <laughs> Why is everyone floating around up there? If it's one-sixth Earth gravity, supposedly, how they knew this in advance, I have no idea, because you don't know what the density of the moon is, but hey, we'll just say they knew. One-sixth Earth gravity, 180-pound man, weighs 30 pounds. You are basically a superhuman at that stage. 30 pounds with your muscles, and these guys were in really good shape. Your vertical jump, white man can white man can jump on the moon. They'd be jumping all over the place. They'd be feats of strength. They'd be able to lift the back end of that moon buggy with one hand. It would be ridiculous. Not, none of this stuff happens. Sorry, go ahead. When I think of the moon buggy, no. When I think of the moon buggy, it does seem kind of grandiose, man. What the fuck were they thinking? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen the. I saw the the replica of the moon buggy up close in at the uh, Kennedy That's Space Center. Though. It's like, what What the hell? Why would you, I mean, let's, by the way, how long did it take you to put it together? The The effort you would have to take to unfold this thing from apparently the bottom of the capsule, unfold everything, tighten everything down, and then, uh, uh, you know, get out there. It's like, what are you gaining from this? Plus, why would you be driving anywhere in an unstable environment? You don't know where the sinkholes are. What, what if you hit a rock? What if it tips over? Oh, it's just none of it made sense. It was all it was all theater that the general public ate. Well, I'll give you a great example. When I asked people outside of the United States, I said, I, in the United States, I get it. Wave the flag. Go team. America's the greatest. We're at the moon. But outside of the United States, I asked them, it's like, why do you believe <laughs> that we went to the moon? They all said the exact same thing. Well, it was on television. I was like, oh, yeah, that's God. What that's what everybody said. Yeah, why? why NASA I go, had the only feed. They don't realize that NASA had the only feed, right? Yeah. I go, we, look, the Americans, I go, I go, I'm not trying to pick on Americans too much. I'm from here. I go, but we lie about everything all the time. That's what we are. We're a, we're a constantly evolving brand. That's, you know, we're trying to be the shiny white hat Superman on the chest type thing. It's like, yeah, you should follow us. We know what we're doing. And everyone goes along with it. And it's just, it's like, again, the, oh, sorry, the, the launch capability thing. Uh, uh, what was it last year? I think it was, or just before the pandemic, where there's, you look it up, it's on wiki entry. There's only six countries in the world with launch capability, right? India, Europe, Japan, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, United States, and Russia, and, and China. 
And and then all of a sudden I see that Israel has a probe that's going to land on the moon, right? Like a rover type thing. I'm going, all right, funny, I don't I don't see them on the list. Where did they get launch capability? And 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 we knew this. We were we were following this live and simulcast, and everyone was saying, Oh yeah, it's gonna crash. It's gonna crash. The thing the camera's gonna die. And they're going to just, they're just going to roll credits and good night, everybody. That's what they're going to do. And sure enough, 10 minutes to go. They're like, oh yeah, countdown. All of a sudden the camera goes weird and it augers into the ground. Supposedly everyone gets up from their workstations. They sing a song and they leave the control room. And, and that's it. it's like, what? What am I watching? Why is everyone doing this? <laughs> Killing me. All right, so let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, I do this podcast. It's a comedy podcast. You know, I only have comedians on here, but I do know a lot of this stuff. Okay. And what uh, a decent amount of comedians said about the moon hoax is two words. Yeah. Mythbusters. What do you think? Oh, oh those guys. <laughs> okay. No, I have, I have an opinion. I should have put them well, in. I'm not a fan. I'm just bad. No, no, no. It's fine. I, I should have put them in my last book. Mythbusters, if I if I was one of, I mean, I don't treat him, I don't give him as much credit as I give like Joe Rogan, but I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm giving you a beret for Christmas just so you know. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mythbusters is a here's here's what you do with Mythbusters. If you're the powers to be, if, if by the way, if Mythbusters ever listens to this, I hope you do. Not everyone's fooled, which is you 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 control a show. Like Mythbusters to the to the nth degree, meaning whatever you want to push out there, whatever narrative, those guys, you know, because again, they're Mythbusters, obviously, you know, the science, you know, they they debunk stuff, and so when they their debunking was they shot was it protons, you know, shot a laser and supposedly at the reflecting dish that we left, the Apollo guys left in 1972, and and supposedly hit this thing and sent back. Uh, a couple little random things on a computer monitor. I remember watching the end of this where they said, look, we got, we got this hint, supposedly a background signal, whether or not it was fabricated and they, they high fived each other. And that was it. They rolled credits. And it's like, that's how we knew the moon was real because we shot a thing up there. It's like, that's, that's it, huh? And yet these are the same, these are the same guys though. That you, they also used, they also did a show because they are a little th- segment on it, and you can find it online, where they were, because people are saying, you know, rocket doesn't work in space. And you're saying, okay, why doesn't rocket work in space? And you, because everyone's going, oh, we obviously know all the space shows, the rockets work in space. It's like, no, it doesn't. Here's why. With our propulsion technology, um, okay, uh, when you walk along the ground, your feet push off the ground. When you're swimming, your hands and your legs push against the water. An airplane is actually pushing against the air, which is nitrogen and oxygen. It's basically a soup. That plane isn't even flying. Technically, it's swimming, right? Well, when you get up to yeah. a certain altitude, which is why planes can't fly up forever, because eventually the, it gets so thin that there's nothing to push against. And you're saying, well, what's your point? I go, well, when a rocket gets up to a certain point, there's really nothing to push against. You know, every reaction has to have an equal or opposite reaction. So if there's nothing to push off against, how is it flying exactly? And Mythbusters, I circle back, Merkel, um, uh, Mythbusters did a thing where they were trying to, to, to do a rocket to move in a vacuum chamber. And they couldn't do it, and they couldn't do it. And all of a sudden, they tweaked something, and they could do it. It's like, oh, okay, so you, yeah. let, you let the air in, basically. And you, and you cheated just to just to do the show. It's like, I, to use a line from Carrie Fisher, uh, the late Carrie Fisher, where she was asked about reality television, and I consider MythBusters basically reality television. And and she laughed when they, they when they asked her about reality TV. And she goes, she goes, come on. She goes, if it's on television, it's not real. And it's like, yep. Yeah. I, I mean, the the a perfect example. I, we didn't talk about this before. Which was uh, even little things like when uh, National Geographic and and I did a thing down in Los Angeles, and I met the the on air personality, the the female host. I met her for the first time six times. All right, <laughs> which was it's like okay, you're gonna come. She's oh hey Mark, hey nice to meet you. Okay, we're gonna come over from this angle. Hey Mark, nice to meet you. Right, and it's like we'll just pick the best ones. We did this for everything. Nothing is real. It's all freaking staged. All of it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you know, a lot of times, a lot of the conspiracy dudes do that. Like, if they're looking for something, they just change a little, you know, a little thing, and then it, it lines up. But what they don't realize is that it kills their cause. 
you know, when, when things like deathbed confessions do that for UFOs and stuff like right. that. Um, but a lot of this stuff is cherry-picked. Like, if you're a fan of Mythbusters, you're home drinking beer, smoking some weed, you're like, yeah, man, they're my boys. Oh yeah, yeah, and and by the way, I I think they do good. I think they do good stuff. Like when they did the um uh when a bullet, if you fire a bullet straight up, will it kill you? <laughs> it's like and that that's a redneck test, isn't it? It's like fire a gun straight up. If you, if you're underneath it, will it kill you? And they found out very quickly. And again, it's just straight up physics that no, no, they won't. It won't. It it will eventually slow down. Well, it, well, it's gonna hurt a lot. <laughs> And it'll probably break the skin, but it's but it's but it can only fall so fast, like 150. It's still going to fall about the speed of a pellet gun, maybe a little faster. But it's not going to go bullet speed down. It's but again, you don't want to do it. I don't recommend anybody doing that. But the, but the point was that's some of those tests they do. Hey, great, really really basic tests that other people can do. But you know, telling me that you shot a laser at the moon and it came back. And all of a sudden, you show a little graph on a computer that other people would have said, I have no idea what that means. We just have to take your word for it. So, no. No. Yeah. Okay. So, so what if some, say somebody, you're, you're, somebody's um, interested in some of the things you're saying, yeah. right? Yeah. What is, what is um, the quickest, like, where could they go to get the most um, Bang for their credible buck? information the quickest? Yeah. But if you wanted to get into it the quickest, I would go to, I've got a list on my channel. You can either type in Mark Sargent or Flat Earth Mark or you can Google it or whatever. But if you type in Flat Earth Mark into YouTube, you'll find my channel. And there's a wonderful playlist in there called Tests and Observations. That was, that's what I'd, I would go to first, you know, just the test, test and observations. Test and okay. observations. That's, that's a great one. Intriguing for people. There's also another playlist called the flatter shortlist for new people, which is a whole bunch of different, um, sizes and content creators, the people that go into flatter stuff. But I mean, if you're hardcore, it's like, I just want to see the facts, then go into tests and observations. If you, if you don't believe anything I say, it's like, well, you're not credible. You're not a pilot or an engineer or an air traffic controller. It's like, fine. I've got a list of those guys too. Um, I've got a, a t testimony shows by subject matter experts, people that called me. I did not find them. How could I find them? They called me from all branches of the military, and they said, oh, yeah, we've got wonderful stuff to say. You probably write about this flat earth, and here's why. And they went on air and gave all the details. The very first guy was a missile instructor from the Navy who said, oh, yeah, we're hitting targets at 60 nautical miles, you know, point to point. We're not bouncing off the stratosphere. We're hitting these things. They should be on the other side of the curve. Plus, we can see them with infrared at night. So there's lots of choices. The, the channel has over 1,000 videos on it at this point. And, and again, you know, do what I try to stress to people is do your own research. Don't take my word for it. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a recruiter. You've got to figure it out for yourself. Okay, so, so what was the last straw for you? Like, what brought you from, like, 90% or maybe you were 80% and you just said, this is real. I'm oh, here. oh, the, the thing that got me was different than other people. Most people, it's, it's photography. Most people, it's long-distance photography. For me, though, it's, the, it's Antarctica, which is the, um, wow. okay. the, the Antarctic Treaty because the, the, the television footage. The, so Admiral Byrd, the, the youngest admiral in the United States Navy, he goes down. He's down there for 30 freaking years. Flying, flying, and fly, of, flying, and flying. The what? I said he went a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's he went from basically from 1928 um, until his death in 1957. I mean, he was just down there flying missions and he was looking for something. And whatever he found during Operation Deep Freeze, 55 to 56, um, he the, everything changed. Meaning he had gone on television the year before. And on uh, on the sixty minutes of the day, the the long long jeans chronoscope, and he said that the place is just made out of money. It's made out of resources. We're all going to be fighting over it. We're going to be there forever. And then all of a sudden, after the uh, Operation Deep Freeze, they, they start working on the Antarctic Treaty, which was ratified in nineteen fifty nine, which says that no corporation from any country for any reason can set up shop there. No one will ever get to own Antarctica, and it's off. It's not even up for review until 2041. And that goes against the reason why that was a big red flag for me is it goes against everything that we are, especially in the United States. Look, this world is about greed and money and power. That's what the backbone of what we do. And 
Yet you're telling me that even though that whole place down there is made out of money, we're walking away from it? Because why exactly? Why are we? We don't walk away from anything. If we wanted to start fracking in your backyard, we can make that happen in a week. And yet we're not allowed to go down there. There's in fact, there's not even there's not even there's no indigenous plant life. There's no animal life. There's no there's no human people. There's no nothing down there. So what's stopping us? And I know full well it's because it's the basically the beginning of the end of the world, and they what, what, they just lock it down. What? Was High Jump one of the missions too, or no? The, I'm sorry, what? Or was that was High Jump one of the missions he did too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Admiral Byrd, yeah, that's a great one. Um, the so everyone that's the one a lot they say about the aliens, right? Yeah, a lot There's of a conspiracy where they say he bought a bunch of military and that they got into a war with the aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great. Honestly, I. There's a reason why that hasn't been made into a movie, and it absolutely should have by now, because it's a, it's a great little story. Where a lot of people don't remember is that we were down in Antarctica. Everyone's been out in Antarctica all the time, but there was a brief spot where everyone left Antarctica, and that was for World War II. But the only there was a there was a country that stayed in Antarctica during World War II, straight out of Indiana Jones. That was Nazi Germany. And why wouldn't you? If, you know, they were, they, Indiana Jones wasn't just a movie. He was, they were absolutely serious. It's like if Germany was, if, if Harry Potter's wand was lying around, they were going to find it. Lord of the Rings, the ring, they were going to go look for it. They would do anything to win the war. Anything. Including going down to Antarctica and look for some mystical thing. And so... Oh, so you think they actually did that? The Nazis did do that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, it's an absolute fact okay. that, they were, that they were down there during World War II for no reason. Yeah, yeah, they said they went down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. that, I mean hell, they set up, they started planting flags. New Schwabenland. And, I mean, they were setting, <laughs> setting up shop. And meanwhile, America takes care of um, the Europe side and then goes to the Pacific Theater. And here's where it gets interesting. Right after the they signed the uh, Japan surrenders, Admiral Byrd takes a full blown carrier fleet. Again, not secret information here. Yeah. The, the whole support ships, five thousand men, and heads straight down to Antarctica for scientific reasons. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what the hell? And and so the stories and then uh, the speculation just goes rampant in that. Okay, were they going down there to root out the Nazis? Did they run into some resistance? I, one of my favorite stories that I heard was that they did engage uh, an ancient civilization that was down there. And the Nazis basically yeah, asked yeah, th this yeah. civilization for <laughs> asylum. That's what I heard. And, and yeah. kind of like a, like a high school dance where, you know, you get your stand. It's like, it's like oh, yeah, you can, you can leave the gym, but you're not coming back. And that's what they were basically saying. It's like, oh, yeah, you, we'll give you asylum. You can we'll, we'll get whoever's left here out, but you can't come back. You know, this, this is the end of the, the, the Nazi thing in Antarctica. And the reason why I kind of kind of like that one is because when Admiral Byrd went on television in 1954 to talk about Antarctic missions, you could tell there was nothing going on in his head. You know, it was like whatever whatever the Nazi problem was. He was gone. Whatever the problem was, was gone. In 1954, he had no worries at all. It was like, oh, yeah, we're just doing our thing. So it was, the problem was resolved. The question is, who resolved it? I don't think we did it on our own. I just don't. Uh, mm. I, I think that, that Germany found something, and you know, maybe they got in over their head. Who knows? Could, again, it could have turned into the, um, uh, the end of Indiana Jones, where they opened up something, and all the Nazis were disintegrated. I don't know. But either way, it was taken. Yeah. It was taken yeah. care of less than eight years later. There's a lot of quotes that are attributed to Admiral Byrd. I think I don't think a lot. So, you know, they said that he flew into the Antarctica hole there. I've joked around on this podcast and call it Antarctica's butthole. <laughs> but there's that hole that everybody says aliens come out of. Yeah. And supposedly he flew through that and saw. 10 like 12 foot alien civilizations and stuff like that so what i want to talk about real quick is yeah um what i do believe i believe all the alien stuff is bs yeah. and i think that it's perpetuated by the media i don't even know if it's because by the powers that be to keep us you know diverted yeah i do too i don't believe and in your case in your case the ufo stuff helps them helps the disbelievers right it muddies the water a little bit. It doesn't come up yeah. as much as you might think, though. What I try to tell people, you know, because I was a big uh, UFO guy. I used to watch uh, I was recommended <laughs> back in 
2010. It's like you want to you want to watch ships. You want to watch things flying around. Get some night vision binoculars, five power or higher. Just start looking in the sky. It's amazing. The, the sky is crawling with stuff. But when, yeah. what I try, oh yeah, it's amazing. Seriously, look. I mean, there's there's videos of online. It's it's just it's it's a completely different. It's kind of like they live the movie. Once you start looking with night vision binoculars, you never go back. I was on my back in the snow in Colorado for years watching this stuff. And then I got into flat earth, but, but real quick, the, what I think about aliens is because people will say, um, do you still believe in aliens? I go, yeah, I do, but I don't think they're from Mars and Jupiter and Venus and all. I just think they're older versions of us. Meaning I think they're the previous occupants of this world. And for some reason, they aren't allowed, call it the prime directive, call it whatever you want. They aren't allowed to interact with the, whoever's on the surface at the moment. Um, we, there's, there's protocols in place. If you want to look it up, um, there's a wonderful, the, the greatest UFO sighting of all time was not, it had nothing to do with Roswell or 1899 Aurora or that thing that crashed in Germany prior to World War II. Um, look up um, 1561 Nuremberg. Uh, the the 1561 Nuremberg Ooh. event, it's got its own wiki entry. I mean, it's it's massive where basically these two giant flying aircraft carriers parked over Nuremberg, Germany uh, in a beautiful spring day and just are duking it out for a straight hour. Now, granted, they didn't have um, photography back then, but they had people that could draw. And so the newspaper people, because they had newspapers, just start drawing the whole thing. I mean, an hour's a long time. You, you know, you, you can finish your <laughs> breakfast, your toast and schnitzengluben, and just keep drawing. <laughs> and they drew this what, these wonderful things. Ancient aliens even talked about it, where these two factions yeah. went. The, and what was weird was these two factions were, were duking it out, and then the third faction, a single black angular ship, pulled in between them. And those these guys, like, took off both directions. It's like... Okay, that raises a few questions. Uh, who were those first two guys? Were they the sharks and the jets? Uh, was the, who were these guys? The cops? <laughs> were the, was it the UN? And by the way, what sort of response time is an hour? It's a long time, for, especially for spaceships, I would think. You know, you, you, I could fire a gun out this window. There'd be cops here in five minutes. But these guys are just doing a full military engagement. So do, so do I believe in aliens? Not in the sense that they are from distant, distant places. Do I think there's advanced technology? That's, that's come on. There's ancient civilizations that have been. Uh, there have been ruins. Of, you know, the, the sunken ruins of off of India, the sunken ruins off of Japan, um, uh, Puma Punku, the, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Bimini Road. There's all sorts of ruins around there. The question is, are they just previous tenants? That's how I think they are. I, I don't think there's anything mystical about them. Uh, people, yeah, I, you know, I would like to believe in, in, in the UFO stuff. Um, I think a lot of times, like, being skeptical and joking around about stuff is a good way to get the right answers. Yes. Um, if, you, if you're too – and this is one of the problems I have with ancient aliens. I, I'm not – I don't like them that much, Mark. <laughs> well, no, no. It's, it's, it's fine. No, I mean, look, if they're on television, there's got to be an angle. And by the way, when ancient aliens was talking about – the dude, 16 seasons. I know, I know, I know, and and you can't, you can't. Ancient Aliens was so yeah. I know, no, I noticed that too. I heck, I bought the first five or six seasons on DVD, and then I realized it's like, wait a minute, how are these guys on 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 air that long if it's supposed to be a big secret? Uh, I do, I do think, I do think they give out a few nuggets of truth, but I, but I, I do, I think they're controlled at at the very end. Yes, only because. The, the, I, I don't watch them anymore, mostly because of that that Nuremberg event. Because the Nuremberg event, they left out the the black angular craft that pulled in at the end. They made it was a really short segment. It's like I they left that out because it gives too much credibility to the story. It gives too much of a depth, too much of a hierarchy that you're like, wait a minute, how many factions are there? And they, I was like, wow, it's really weird. I mean, you had the time to really go in deep. You could have done an entire episode on it, and you didn't. You only spent like six minutes well, on it. Anyway. Yeah, well, that's what they do. They shape it and they twist it and yeah. they get the answers that they want. And they're very, like, very adamant. I mean, dude, if you could get, if you could get laid with a Ph.D. in folklore, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, don't feed me bullshit all the time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just, dude, when I look at their sponsors, it's the same people that put on the, the Super Bowl. Yeah. Same sponsors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I mean, alien, the 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 alien. Plus, they always leave it with a question mark at the end, which I thought you know was 
You know, they, they don't... At, but at the end, the narrator... Again, the, the format has worked. The formula has worked. Where the narrator at the end says, you know, does, does this blah, blah, blah ruins, blah, blah, blah sighting, blah, blah, blah event, you know, prove that there is, you know, life outside? And he just he just hangs it there. And that's it. You know, go go to credits. And it's like, oh, okay, I okay. get yeah. Because they're not... They're not Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I say they're not beating you over the head with it, but at the same time, I mean, everybody's heard of it. And uh, hell, the kid, uh, the 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 guy with the hair, Giorgio, he um he's a me yeah. he's a meme now. You know him kind of squinting. You know, there's what you'll look up his yeah. his ancient aliens meme. Type that into Google. You'll see him with his hair all up. He just made it got it bigger and bigger every year. It's like I make that hair bigger because they don't want to make it again. They only make the show sort of credible. You know, they, they, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, these guys, I mean, they could have totally recast this with guys that were way more professional, you know, you, you couldn't do, Absolutely. you couldn't do Absolutely. a group of, remember, I'm old enough to remember Leonard Nimoy's In Search Of, that's your credibility right there, <laughs> put Leonard Nimoy in there, get, make it, get Morgan Freeman, <laughs> put him, start talking about stuff, yeah. <laughs> Well, there's always truth in these things. That, there's always a little bit of truth. That's what holds these things together. Yes. Um, let me just ask you real quick. Yeah. Um, we're going to wrap up in a minute. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, no. you spending this much time. But I've enjoyed it. So a lot of people, like when I say your name to people, I've been lately. I've been saying your name to people. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you answered me back. <laughs> Um, so I say, um, you know, from behind the curve, the Netflix documentary. Right. And let me tell you, um, I don't think they did you right on that documentary. They were. Um, would you recommend people watch that? Or, uh, or what? Uh, well, OK, I, w- I will say this because well, let's face it, the, the, the Netflix documentary, which initially was produced by an independent L.A. film team and then sold to Netflix. They had no faith in the project. They didn't think it was. They didn't. They didn't think it was going to get into film festivals. They certainly didn't think it was going to get purchased, and it was supposed to be a human interest piece. However, by the time they were done, and none of the people that were filming the the documentary became converts at all, because they were just they wouldn't. They refused to believe. In fact, they refused to believe that we believed it. To this day, and they could have, they totally could have made a sequel to this. They, they, since, I mean, the director, after spending seven months with me, director's looking at me like, yeah, you don't believe this. I was like, where is this coming from? It's like, no, he couldn't, he just couldn't get his head around that somebody else could get their head around it. And, and so what, how they spun it was by the time they got to the end, do I recommend people should watch it? Yes, I do. Um, not if you're okay. if you're already into flat Earth, no, you will hate it. Um, if you're not into flat Earth at all, <laughs> it'll be very intriguing because you will all this, you'll see a good. It's a, it, it is a fair cross section of the community on that particular year. Did they spin it to try to make us look a little weird? Sure, but any director would, um, unless you were you know unless you're in the flat Earth. The reason why they came after us was because there was, um, when I was at the conference, I was talking at the, towards the end of the movie, a 12-year-old kid who I could not see because of the house lights um, was talking to me in the microphone. That's why I asked him how he was 12 years old. And they said, and we knew this because it was in the, the iTunes uh, director's commentary, they said, oh, yeah, this is where we had to take a stand uh, against Flat Earth because we thought that they were affecting the future and talking to children is never a good idea. And, you know, you're 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 bending you're bending the minds of the youth and they were you know, they have to take a moral stand. And it's like, OK, all right. But it worked out in the end. You know, even though I'd love to go back and make changes to the movie, people say, oh, would you change a bunch of stuff? And if you ask any other flat earther, they'd say they just erase everybody, any dissenting voices. The thing was. The dissenting voices in this movie made people feel comfortable in the theater. They kept watching it. I sat in studio audiences yeah. and they wouldn't, very few people, or oh, the exception of a, a, a couple of older people, that they're like, no, the moon mission happened. We're leaving, Edith. And they left. Um, but the rest of the people stayed because they, they, in fact, the first, what sucks you in is the first 30 minutes of it. If you're not a flat earther, you don't even believe what you're seeing. You're just in a state of shock. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, this isn't, they're, they're not kidding. This isn't a, you're not, they're not, it's not, this isn't a parody. This isn't a piece of docu. This isn't a Borat film. 
This is something else. And so they... How many people would you say you got from that? Would you say you got... Oh, we got tons of people. We got tons of people. We got my email load, which was already pretty big at the time, doubled in a month meaning it was like just exploded in fact i'm going i had to ask people it's like what the i that's how i knew how big netflix was netflix was it's like yeah people have amazon prime and hulu and voodoo and all this stuff it's like no no netflix basically if you're under the age of 30 you have netflix it is the biggest bang for your buck in terms of um i mean it's why they yeah, just you know netflix, destroyed yeah. blockbuster but that's how i knew because i knew when it came out on amazon i knew when youtube red picked it up i knew when the other people like, oh yeah we got a bump here and a bump here but then netflix happened it was like floodgates so yeah we we picked up now granted yes there are a lot of people that you know didn't change their minds but as you know, in the media world, exposure is everything. It doesn't matter. Producers told me, I learned this six years ago, where producers say, yeah, it doesn't matter whether the audience loves or hates a topic as long as they're watching the topic. Uh, you know, yeah, swear word to me. Jersey, <laughs> Jersey Shore, a perfect example, right? People yeah. love to hate that show and the people who are in it. And that's the same thing, sort of the same thing in this. People... Which is why I'm just stunned that the um, and I know we're getting closer. I don't know if it'll happen. Really happen. I I have told people there was um uh, uh, real quick. I know we're gonna wrap up. There was um. Uh, no, it's okay. I, I mean, we have a, you know. I know you're probably busy. Though. Well, no, no, no. I but yeah. I I want to I want to end on a good note. So there was a, a television. <laughs> we we've had television producers swimming around us since day one for obvious reasons. And there was a but some, but it was too soon back in 2015. When we were just starting out, there was um, a, a producer from True Television out in New York. I don't know if they're still around. They might be. And they, um, uh, she, she set up uh, uh, screen tests and the whole nine yards. And she's like, yeah, this will be a great show. It's so polarizing. She absolutely was ahead of the game on this. And she sits down, you know, with her big group. <laughs> you know, it goes, where are you, you going to Where are you gonna pitch? <laughs> and she, um, she goes, yeah, Flat Earth. She runs the reel. She was fired within a week because of this. Now, there's yeah. there's a happy ending to this story. Well, because it was too soon. People were like, again, the reaction was kind of like what you said. Why people lose? It's like yeah. it's like flat Earth. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Right after the Netflix oh, yeah. af, after the Netflix documentary yeah. came out, the the VP of of True TV called her <laughs> and said, "Yeah, really, really sorry about." <laughs> That would happen. About us missing it, yeah. yeah. But again, yeah. producers are paid to say no, and I get it. You know, you, there's, I mean, how, how many stories in Hollywood and, and entertainment over the years where, where you know, there's things that were never ever supposed to be be made into something and they became huge hits. You, you never know. With, with... Oh, yeah, there's no integrity. There's no integrity in the media anymore. Very little. No. Because even the good reporters, they got a, a they got a, a, they're in competition with the clickbait. Yeah. You know, so they have to even compromise if they want anybody to read what they're saying. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I've so seen, I have seen news stories about. change their headlines over the years where now, yeah, you're absolutely right. They're competing with all of social media. It's a tough ball game out there. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me, I have a few more questions and we're going to wrap up. Sure. Um, this is very interesting to me. I really appreciate you. You seem like a very um, open dude. Um, you don't seem like, you know, you're that you passionate about it, but you know, there's a fine line between passionate and, you know, overdone. Right. And I think you're just passionate about it. How many people do you have? How many people, not you, but how many people do you think are in the flat earth movement right now? Oh, millions, millions. I mean, absolutely, yeah. absolutely millions. The, um, I mean, if, even if you took, uh, 5% of the United States, which is very, very possible, probably more than that. Um, every, remember every percentage point in the U S is three, three and a half million people every percentage point okay um you can look up the stats but there are some countries we we're bigger than than others but we we have millions and millions and millions of people i mean we had conferences before the whole virus thing happened we had conferences in um seven eight countries in 2019 it was it was massive i mean we we do we just say meetups like oh yeah we're gonna do a meetup in this town a whole bunch of people show up um it but the thing for us is is that 90 percent of our members are in the closet and yes, I know I'm making a kind of com oh, okay. comparison to the whole. That's interesting. Yeah. But it, but uh, the term. You covered that that a lot of people are scared because people do. 
their whole family drops them, right? There, there have been a lot of instances. I mean, there are divorces that have happened. There has been people that have been fired. I mean, look at the high profile stuff. Every celebrity that has talked about this has gotten chastised. And I mean, Kyrie Irving, a great example of it because he, he, he thought he had nothing to lose. He was a champion. He just got his ring. He was LeBron's best friend, blah, blah, blah. He was 25, 24, maybe turning 25. And he's like, oh yeah, he goes on a podcast. Yeah, I'm a flat earther. Here's why. Right. And then he lands on media day and they come after him and they never let up. And he's brought up to him every, every chance to get. If you're a celebrity, do you want to bring that, that up? If you're a celebrity? No. No, I've talked to some pretty, pretty cool celebrities. They're saying, "Yeah, sorry, man, not coming out, not till the waters are safe," and I, I don't blame them. Um, but we have people in just about. So this is a great example. This is a great example of uh, the guy. You know, he he's a great basketball player. I I know about basketball. Yeah. But he plays. You know, he plays basketball with his pajamas on on a hardwood floor. Yeah. Why did they care so much? Right. Right, right. Oh, you mean why? Why? Oh, oh, why? You're absolutely right. Why did? Why? Why does his opinion matter? Oh, the the great example would be on media day on uh, during that All Star game, USA Today. The the guy who was there from USA Today came at him and they and he said, "Look, you have three million or whatever it was followers right now. Most of them are kids. It is irresponsible for 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 um, pushing out oh, pushing out okay. fake science to these kids, and." The follow up to that was, oh, well, yeah, to follow up was was there was a lot of and I'm not picking when I say this, a lot of urban science teachers. Let's call it what you know what it is. Um, what was happening was the, the these teachers in inner city schools were coming out and saying, oh, yeah, the earth is a sphere, blah, blah, blah. Here's why. Right. And the kids were pushing back. Kids were like, "Yeah, my man Kyrie, he's got a shoe. He's got shoe deal. He's one of the best he, point guards in the history of the NBA." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 my man, and uh, he's got he's got a whole bunch more credibility than you, and he's got millions and millions of followers. He's going. He says it's flat. What do you say to that? <laughs> and what was happening was these science teachers were were contacting Kyrie, you know, via email and saying, "Dude, you're killing us." He's just killing us. We're, we're, you're making our job way, way harder. And so what happened was, this plays into your media thing, where the media, where he goes to, uh, Kyrie does, does a, a, Forbes did a 30 under 30, you know, 30 people under the age of 30 that are influential. And he apologized to the science teachers, right? But And somebody recorded it. And what do you think the media did? The media said, "Oh, Kyrie." Like well, Ky yeah. they said Kyrie recants flat Earth, not a flat Earther anymore. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, he, well, he said he was kidding. No, no, right? no, no. He, he, he just he, he did not say he was kidding. He was not saying he was joking. All he was doing was saying, "Yeah, I'm sorry that I made the science teachers feel bad," but that's all he retracted. It's like, come on. Oh, really? Because they made it sound like he was kidding. That's what yep, I Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. Never heard him say he was kidding. Yeah, because the, the media wants that. That's the narrative they want. They do not want, they do want uh, influential people talking about flat earth. They don't. Uh, everyone that's ever tried. I mean, it doesn't even matter if you're in the game. Um, Freddie Flintoff, a great example out of England. You know, legendary Hall of Famer cricket guy. I don't, I don't know cricket that well. But apparently, you know, and he's been out of the game for, I don't know, eight, nine years. Oh, front page. Freddie, Freddie, a flat earther, you know, because of the Fs, it kind of goes. And, you know, was, you know they, everyone in the UK ran with it. And it, it's gone. It, well, again, the montage over um, the, the, the Shaquille O'Neal thing. I mean, it got pretty bad where there was a number of NBA players that were going on with Kyrie. The Shaquille O'Neal thing was a great example where Shaquille was on with him for like 10 days. And then some one of his sponsors contacts his agent, says, yeah, we really can't have him saying that. So there's a clause in here. We'll make it. You can't sell car, you can't sell car insurance if the world worth is, the earth is flat. Well, yeah, I mean, they're going to they're going to say, look, you're potentially damaging the brand. And so he had to go on Jimmy Kimmel. And Jimmy was used as a as a tool in this case. Where Jimmy was like, oh, so you were kidding about that. And Shaq's like, was I? And so then you didn't know. It's like, what? Because Shaq is known to clown around. But I listened to that original podcast when Kyrie came out and, and Shaq was talking. He absolutely was on board. And why, why wouldn't he be? You know, so, yeah. Anyway. 
Okay, so, so um, this is one of my last questions here. So let me ask you, have you ever felt in any danger? Has anybody ever, like, um, I'm sure some idiot said some stupid stuff, but is anything, you know, has anybody ever threatened you or anything like that? I have had exactly one threat in my in my life regarding this. There was a guy that wrote me, for the most part, again, six years, pretty good. Never had an act of violence. No one's That's ever. Not bad. Those are those are good. No, that's a good number. Yeah, no, no one's ever stared me down at a meetup. Um, the, you know, there were there were there were a couple guys supposedly that said they were going to beat me up at that conference, and we just upped the security. And and but I I think that was just bluff. There was one guy that emailed me that said he was going to stab me with a twenty four centimeter knife, and I said, Why? and I was like. It's like, well, no, but I was confused because uh, look, I'm American. I don't know the metric system. So it's like, all right, you're obviously not from here. So I wrote him back and I said, look, I go, I don't know where you are, but you know, what, what the hell? And so, but apparently that's like nine inches. I, I did not know. So he writes, <laughs> writes back and he apologizes for this, right? It gets even weirder. He apologizes in an email, right? It's not even a spoofed email. It's his real email. And he goes, he goes, look, I was hitting the glass when I wrote that. So, you know, I just want, so I, I thought it was so funny. I read it on air. You know, it's like, oh yeah, the guy said it was hitting the glass. And I, I remember Patricia was with me. It's like, it's like, you know, cause I said, well, it's obviously a crack thing, right? I don't know anything about <laughs> drugs. So he writes back and he goes, death threat apology. Uh, it could be crystal meth too. It could be exactly. Crystal meth. Exactly. He writes back in the email. <laughs> The title of the email was death threat apology with corre number two with corrections. And he, he goes, he goes, just to let you know, hitting the glass means meth. He goes, he goes, yeah. he goes, I was on a yep. six day meth bender when I wrote that. <laughs> I go, oh, okay. That makes it much better. So that was it. And so even he turned out fine, you know, six years and, yeah, and, and not cool. just me, nobody in the community has gotten um, beaten up or not, nothing bad has happened, you know, as far as, you know, acts of violence. And so it's great. It's been great. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you, well, you know, don't, don't hit the job and been, and been kind of disgraced a little, right? The what? People have lost their jobs and been discreet, ostracized, right? Well, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, there's that, but, but nothing, yeah, nothing, nothing, but, but honestly, not like Nobody, I, I haven't heard of a lot of people that have gotten fired directly. People have quit just because they've been browbeaten by peer pressure. It's like, oh, it's the flat earth guy. You know, let's, let's, you know, let's make his, whatever. It, it's the peer. I guess the, that's human nature. If somebody knows something oh, yeah. and they're miserable, anything they can say to you. Like oh yeah. And so the, it's actually the coworkers, which is the, the worst thing. Friends and family we can deal with. But you, if you go into work every day, you don't want to hear that. So a lot of people, again, 90% yeah. of our community, they've told me, it's like, yeah, we, j I just don't want to deal with that. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but don't you ever out me. It's like, fine, <laughs> fine. I won't. All right. All right. So, so I just want to ask, okay. Um, what other sites, is there other sites besides yours? I want, um, I want to give people right now an opportunity to leave whatever they're listening to us on and go research what are what are what are your site your channel is there another one? Oh well okay if you want if uh, other than my channel the the quickest way to jump around and i've made a great collection is just go well you can go to my channel uh and then there's a playlist called the flat earth shortlist for new people which is okay. just a wonderful collection of a whole bunch of different content creators. If you type in flat earth into YouTube with just no filters, you're going to run into a lot of mainstream channels and a lot of people that are picking on flat earth. Cause let's face it. If you have a million, oh if you have a million or more subscribers, you're going to get higher rankings just because that's what YouTube does. It's like, these are our high profile channels. And if the high profile channels aren't going to take the risk, most of them are not going to say, I mean, yeah, Shane Dawson did, you know, he took the risk. Um, but the rest of, you know, the rest of them are pretty good about just saying, oh, Flatter's dumb because they're afraid of what, you know, what their audience might do. I mean, I told you during the thing, look, Alex Jones turned us, turned us down for four years and that's Alex Jones. You know, it's like, cause he couldn't, he said he was, he, his team was worried about the backlash of talking about flat earth. And so anyway, so long story short, 
don't don't just type in flat earth and expect you're going to find it you're going to have to go do a little research and find the big channels that are out there and there are a lot too many to mention here okay awesome awesome well mark i want to thank you so much for coming on dude i had a ball yeah very welcome it was it was fun thank you absolutely dude i hope you can come on some other time and i hope we can uh we can talk privately about cool stuff soon i would be delighted <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot, dude. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See ya. All right. Cheers. Bye.